Welcome to the Carr and Seguin Show, hosted by Devin Carr and Paul Seguin, where two Michiganders dive into real estate, outdoors, community building, and everything in between. What is up, dude? What's going on, man? Oh, episode 59. Yes, sir. Halfway to 118. Fast today. Dude, we're fast today. We are rolling. There you go. I was only fast because we did it pre show. (laughs) (laughs) You had that Johnny double check my math. Right, yeah. (laughs) Just waiting there. Yeah, yeah. So, what is cracking, my brother? Not much, man. From another mother. Just hanging out. That's right. Another day. It is. Another day. It is. How about you? Yeah, just living the dream every yep. day. Golfing? Yeah, well, the boys have been. Not me. Freezing. Freezing. Is actually what I've been doing. It, they don't re- like, I come, like, really overdressed. And they, like, especially when I got to, I was telling you, like, at Leo's for breakfast. Right. And I'm, I'm in, like, covered. And they're like, it's not that cold, coach. I'm like, you don't realize how cold it is. To just stand around right. <laughs> for for five plus hours and driving around on a golf cart. Right. That, you know, 10 to 15 mile an hour wind is more like 20 to 25 on the golf cart. And you're, yeah, you're just doing a lot of sitting. Like it's you're a lot moving. colder. Oh, yeah. You're the one carrying a 30 pound golf bag and walking well, up and down. Right. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> producing heat. I'm not. <laughs> That's why sometimes you, you, I'm not even making it, like you see me doing jumping jacks. I'm like, I got to warm up. Well, yeah. I'm literally like standing. It's cold just sitting there. It is cold. <laughs> Us coaches are always freezing. Right. All the time. <laughs> um, just waiting for that warm up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we've, yeah, we've had a couple tournaments now already. And yeah, it's stupid though. I mean, over the weekend we were in the eighties and, and then Monday, Tuesday we're 40. Right. Rain, cold, sleet. I mean, it was yeah, yesterday was even worse. Yeah. When our tea time at 9.30, it was like 37 degrees on the phone. <laughs> yeah. And of course you got, I'm sorry, it, dumb idiots. I'm sorry. There's just dumb parents these days that allow your kid to go out in shorts, <laughs> knowing that they're going to play golf for five hours. And if you look at the dang weather forecast, it says high today of 44 degrees. Right. Uh, with a chance of rain and wind chilled of like 39. I'm sorry. You're just stupid. Well, there's a lot. I mean, even adults. I, mean, I hear you laughing back it. there, Johnny. <laughs> I mean, I just don't get it. I mean, we're literally like in shorts and uh, I mean, just nothing. And I'm, I've got guys on my team has done it. One, we had to practice, I think last week or whatever it was, it was freezing, but we just kept getting snowed out and like, let's just go play. Who wants to play? And of course they all wanted to play. Right. And then I won't mention names. <laughs> Literally shows up in shorts and a polo, like nothing else. I'm like, dude, go home and get something. He's like, no, I don't want to. No, I'm like, yes. I'm not going to let you play in this. It's for I'm getting cold watching you. (laughs) Do they make uh, flip-flop golf cleats yet? I think they make sandals, not flip-flop ones, right? They do. I was say because people will be wearing those damn things out before long. I love my (laughs) flip-flops. I've I love my flip flops. You have flip flop golf shoes? No. Oh, just flip flops. I just love flip flops in general, man. I was wearing them today. I went dropped off Savannah at school this morning and wearing flip flops. One lady's like, "It is like thirty degrees." I'm like, "So what? I'm trying to live an island life (laughs) because spring and summer are coming. (laughs) Got to somehow bring the vibe into the mix, you know? (laughs) It's just yeah. Why? I mean, we I say this multiple times, but why do we live in this state? We and someone put it best the other day when we were obviously talking about this is like Michigan has the extreme for every season. Like our winners are extreme. Mm-hmm. Spring, I don't know whether what you want to call it a extreme. Well, because we do just get a stupid amount of rain, I guess. Yeah, and we have been lately. And then our summers are just so sticky and humid Mid. and hot and full of mosquitoes. <laughs> it's so funny. Grayson is just like, as we've started to get warmer weather, like they, he's, Oh getting, yeah. He doesn't like mosquitoes. He does not yeah. like mosquitoes. Yeah, I remember that. And so like, as we're, the days are warming up and we're going outside more now and, 
I mean, the tr- it, I mean, hopefully it's just one of those things he'll grow out of, hopefully. <laughs> you know, how kids have their own little, you know. Right. Issue things that hopefully they grow out. Grayson is all, he hates mosquitoes. He sees anything <laughs> flying and, dude, I mean, I hate to admit it, but, like, the girlish scream and goes, <laughs> mosquito! <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's a fly. <laughs> no, it's a mosquito, I'm like. He's no. coming for me. Yeah. <laughs> he hates it. He hates getting the bites. And I mean, it's, yeah, we're working on it still. Yeah. Well, as long as that breeze picks up or stays there, right? Like Sunday. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. It, we just need less rain. I mean, it's just too wet. It just doesn't look like it's going to stop. No. They said it was supposed to be above average wet spring. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's all we really need. I mean, yeah, it sucks for our backyarders. Just a mess. Dude, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I got to tackle that whole issue. So if anybody who wants to donate their time and their tractor (laughs) to uh, helping me and my backyard out, please um, come. (laughs) Come. (laughs) Won't turn them away? Heck no. I'll pay you beer. I'll cook some venison for you. About to get a whole bunch of cow meat too. So, hey, I got red meat. Yeah. I'll feed you. I'll make you, I'll make you, you know. What do you got to do to your backyard? Dude, it, it's the, it's just all, well, the, all the rain and, and the water ain't helping, but the creek, I think what the bigger issues that we have is my neighbor has this creek that goes through our backyard, goes into uh, a swampy area on my neighboring property. Okay. And I think the full, like 30,000 view of what's going on is there's a pond to the west of our property and then we have this creek that comes from the pond Mm -hmm. and then to the east of us it goes into our this neighboring swampish area which then because i've walked it and i'm like this is my conclusion i know this is the conclusion and it's supposed to go into the like a road ditch drain right and so it goes down our road Underneath a a street that goes off into like a little subdivision per se, mm-hmm. and then that goes all the way into the, another big pond. And I think what's happening here. So, I mean, to dive into it. So our creek used to be you could tell someone either weed whipped it out, like it was clear. Mm-hmm. Well, then I don't know if this I've I have made it maybe worse. I let it overgrow. Mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to get the whole tall grass look going. Okay, okay. But I don't know if that has slowed down the water trickle uh. as well. Uh, but that's the, so my creek is overgrown. So I got to, I got to like weed whip that all down. I, I want to actually dredge it out more to mm-hmm. make it bigger. Uh, but then I think that's what also has to happen. The, the creek flow into my neighboring property that then goes to the road ditch yep. that goes off to the pond. That's all overgrown as well. And the thing I say is because when we first bought the house, I mean, this was like closing day when we had all both of our families over uh-huh. uh, afterwards. And I remember they came out and, and talked to us. And I remember, I won't mention his name, but he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll have to work on that at some point. I'm like, you know, because at the time, that creek in our backyard was bone dry. dry. I mean, there was it. I mean, you kind of, our th- first initial thought was like, oh, this maybe just is like a little, a little kind of creek thing. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Right. I mean, shoot, you can just, I mean, I was riding, I would ride the lawnmower right through when I was cutting grass. I'd just go right, and then just keep going. Okay. My pat, I mean, it was that mm-hmm. dry. Yeah. Uh yeah now I can't even I can't even, <laughs> I can't even take my zero turn down there without getting stuck I mean halfway through my backyard it's just, it's just done water. I can't move yeah it's horrible it's beyond horrible um so yeah I think my my dad's gonna bring his tractor over and just start because he's got the whatever the the bucket the arm bucket thing mm-hmm. just start doing it and I gotta. So I got to go, I just got to start having some conversations with the neighbor (laughs) and I'm going to go talk to the township and possibly even the road commission just because those ditches, I'm there. Is the the culvert all packed in? Yeah, it's all packed in. Like those need to be like just placed. Yeah, they need to be re, 
three dug out and widened and bigger. Mm-hmm. And I think the, then the water should be able to flow more. Right. I think that's the problem is because you, the way of the lead, you could tell the pond over here is definitely higher right. than us. So it's definitely obviously coming down and obviously the flow of the water. We know that it's all going that way. And I think what happens is it, it's, sh- it's easily going through us, but then it hits right at our neighboring property swamp area and just slows down mm-hmm. and it ain't going anywhere. So, um, I did have a client even say that his buddy and Dexter kind of had the same situation. <laughs> and, uh, I think he actually went and talked to the, the township about like doing something mm-hmm. along these lines. And they said, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, so he told me, he's like, well, so when the township told him, no, we just decided to Take do it ourselves. Right. And, and we did it in the middle of the night. With our own tractor. Yep. <laughs> and, and he's like, it's work. They just dug a hole. Mm-hmm. They just, in the, kind of in the back where it was getting really swampy, just dug a real deep hole, like kind of almost like a retention little pond. And ever since then. Fixed it. it yeah, it took care of it. We had, we had a, a culvert in our Reed City house that needed to be replaced. And the county actually replaced it for us because it was all backed up. And that could call them and, and they came out and fixed it. Yeah, that's. I just got to make phone calls. I'm li- this has literally been an issue since last fall when just obviously all the rain we kept getting. Right. But, yeah, I just got to get on it because it's annoying. I mean, we have the kids have a huge play set. Right. It's in mud. Oh. It's actually even tilting because the ground is getting that soft. Oh, wow. Because it's all mushy. I mean, you can't even go enjoy our fire pit in the back because it's just, com- I mean, you're just literally, as soon as you... Because our house is built up, so as soon as you kind of go off of the built up and you just walk in, and it's like, I mean, you're just squishy grass squishy. all over. And we knew it was getting bad because, I mean, even before the ton of rain came, to the west, or no, to the east, it, was, it would always puddle there. But now it just puddles, like, the whole oh. length, and it's just like, yeah, it sucks. So, yeah. That is a... Uh, Got some work. Yeah. Home ownership. Lovely. <laughs> it's the dream. It's right? the American dream. Yeah. Home ownership, baby. <laughs> Spend money. <laughs> Lots of it. <laughs> no, it'll be fun. I like doing yeah. that stuff anyways. And it'll be, even though it's a pain in the butt, and it will be probably a pain in, in my rear all year, but I'm excited. I, I, there's part of me where I'm like, I'm kind of curious to see what really actually is the problem. Right. And just what we start figuring out. But that's the hope is that if I get on the horn with the township or the road commission Mm -hmm. or or the county, because that's who the road commission would be through is the county, that they would just come out and at least just like kind of even just scrape, redredge those little ditches, clear them up, make them even a little bigger. Because, I mean, there's the space that's there. And maybe that will help just get the water going Mm -hmm. quicker and get over there to that other pond and just... I mean, I don't mind if the creek that we have has got some water in it. It's kind of cute. looks yeah, great. Right, yeah. But, like, as long as it just keeps the surrounding area dry. Right, yeah. And that's all I want. I mean, if it's sinking stuff in your backyard. Man, I can't cut the grass. I mean, I just did over the weekend. You but did? I did? But I only did, like, the little, the the hori- the rate. You didn't get the memo? You're not supposed to cut your grass in May. Why? I think City of Ann Arbor just passed something. Not too long ago that you're not supposed to cut your grass in May anymore. In April? No, in May. It's not May yet. Well, if you're cutting it in April, you're too soon. Ann Arbor can suck it. It's supposed to be for the bees. Something about pollinating. They don't don't pollinate on grass. I don't know. I didn't read it. Mowing and (laughs) ant... What Ann Arbor? It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Freaking Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor mowing laws. Somebody, somebody else does it. Does it too? I forgot who. I want to say New York. Maybe they said. Ah! Ann Arbor City Council declares no mow May. No mow May. Encouraging property owners to refrain refrain from mowing their property from now until May thirty first of twenty twenty two. 
Though this initiative does not apply to violations of city ordinances that affect public safety under Section 2. Dude, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the, the owner of every parcel of land is responsible for greening, mowing, and nah, nah, nah. get ready to save the bees with the no mow. Yeah, but I don't think. I have to ask this map. He's, he's huge in the bees. I don't think somebody else, another another state or something does it too. Hmm. I thought maybe that was going to be to save gas. Oh, no. Right? You can't mow all the way in April to save your gas. But just think, if you get all that rain and you get some sunshine, what all those yards are going to be. Like, <laughs> how oh, thick that grass is going to be. See, I don't know, that's just stupid, though. The council recognized that dandelions and other wildflowers, which growing lawns, are essential source of... Well, then, you know, that's dumb. People spray stuff on their yard to get rid of their dandelions. Heck yeah! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they don't want them. Yeah, I love the guy's comment on this Fox 2 News report. Yeah, because it's so much fun cutting grass, it's up to your knees. <laughs> yeah. What a bunch of freaking wackos in Ann Arbor. I'm sorry. If you love Ann Arbor, you're a wacko, too. I mean, I love uh, you. Whatever. It's stupid. <laughs> bunch of freaking idiots in that town. You would think they'd have something better to do with their time. Tree-hugging fools. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't mow your grass to save the bees. That's a joke. <laughs> I mean, Ann Arbor is located in Washtenaw County, probably one of the more farm-populated countries in the area. I'm sure the bees would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. What a joke. Well, it doesn't apply to me. I'm not in Ann Arbor. Yeah. Screw that. But doesn't mean you can't adopt it. I, mean, I see lots of wildflowers around my <laughs> yard. I think they're okay. <laughs> I'm cutting my grass. I like my double cut. I couldn't imagine what it's be like cutting your grass after, especially all this rain with some sunshine, May 31st. <laughs> oh, gosh. It would be tall. It would be very it, tall. Yeah, it'd be a pain in the butt, just like that guy said. I mean, shoot, I've done it in too many times, getting busy and forget just putting off cutting grass as much as I got. It sucks. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt. And then it takes you like a couple of weeks just to get caught up because you're always throwing around the freaking clumps of grass right, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> You know, shoot, I did that a few times last year. I just went out with the blower mm -hmm. just to get rid of the grass clippings. Just blow them all in the pile, break them up, throw them into my neighbor's property. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good thing That's he okay. doesn't live there. <laughs> Even though he's a jerk and wouldn't let me hunt on it. <laughs> I hope he might, you're listening. He might be listening. Yeah. That's fine. At least now he knows. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he just rents out the fr the freaking yeah. Maybe maybe I should dangle a little money like, hey, I'll give you two grand. There you go. Hunt. Let me hunt on your property. I mean, he's never there. He rents out the house that's on it. He didn't, he didn't get his million bucks. He was asking no, for no, not when yet. He it, when he had it listed, I remember that. Yeah, but no. What kind of uh, rig do you have? You have the Ranger, right? Yeah. Yeah. I keep hearing all these ads on the Mediator podcast that uh, Steve Arnell does for Can-Am. Wow. Ah. Can-Am. My brother's got a Can-Am. Does he? Mm-hmm. I like these Defenders because I want a four-door because mm -hmm. of the kids. Oh, yeah. But I still want the bed. And they're just sweet. But they're freaking... Oh, it's expensive. 30,000 bucks. Oh, yeah. And when I tried to convince Jess, it didn't go so well. No, <laughs> no, no. She's like, you and your freaking toys. <laughs> Could they ever just be like $100? It's clearly not a good toy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to last long. <laughs> no, no. No, yeah, I was fooling around trying to, I was building one. <laughs> you could go crazy. Oh, well, yeah. But they're nuts. not they're not anywhere. I sent out a like um a you know once you build one they can like they you fill out the form right 
find who's got one. The closest one's in Arkansas. And I called a couple at like CNC and Howell. There's like, yeah, we got some, uh, whatever the smaller ones are. And I'm uh-huh. like, no, I want the four door, the track, the tracker or something. I think there's, I can't remember what it is, but there, there's a giant store. I think up north. I almost want to say Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee. That they're supposed to have like the best. They best get all the deals. allocations. Yeah. I know my cousin, if it is Tennessee, wherever it is, he went down and that's where he bought his app. I know. Because well, I don't think you have to pay sales tax either. Yeah, but. Because you te- technically you don't have to register. Oh, right. You don't. You get insurance. I mean, then you buy your ORV. You don't need license plates. Right. That's true. Tennessee looks like I think I think that's where it's at. I don't remember, but there's a there's a place that's got a. I mean, there's tons of them. They have a ton of them. I think we bought our Ranger in Lakeside Motorsports in La Costa. Where's that? It's not far from Big Rapids. Oh, over there. Yeah, they have them all. They have. I know there's they have all the brands, so you can kind of test drive one, you test drive them all together. Right. Instead of just going to like someone that does K and M or Kawasaki or Ranger. I like the K and M though. You like what you like. I know. They had a, I had I loved their because uh, I had their CD once. She was fun. I miss my little <laughs> CD. What'd you do with it? Met Met Jess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> had to get rid of it. <laughs> well, I, uh, I it was it got down to the point where it was like, okay, well, so I'm gonna pop the question. Um, started looking at rings, and I'm like, better get rid of this. <laughs> kind of looked at the jet ski, and I'm like, well, guess I could sell that and get my money back and buy the ring with that. <laughs> I would wrestle it to a guy up in West Branch. He came all the way down. Took it for, I think I sold it for like 9500 bucks. Oh, nice. So there you go. Let's go. Yeah. Got my money. <laughs> Went ring shopping the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was gone. <laughs> See ya. Every now and then pictures on like Facebook memories comes up. I'm like, oh, oh there she is. The jet ski. My GTI 155. <laughs> that was fun. My little baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I had a blast of that. I would, shoot, I'd go take it out. I always go to Cass Lake. Mm-hmm. Just go cruising. It's fun times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were fishing on the Detroit River two weekends ago. It wasn't warm. It was pretty. It was cold. Oh yeah. Well, here comes a jet ski <laughs> coming up the river, Are you all rigged for fishing. It's like you have got to be kidding me. It was like thirty degrees. Ah! I mean, everyone's got hand warmers on. I mean, gloves. And here's this, this jet ski comes cruising up. It's like you have what are you doing? I do. I, I think it is kind of comical when you see those guys just, I mean, I guess it's, you know, maybe more affordable, but like, I don't know. There's just no room to fish on a jet ski. I mean, I just was more for, it's freezing and you're literally in the water. Yeah. You're in the water. <laughs> there's no way there's no water, yeah. not in your, the foot, the foot right. wells. Yeah. There's always water down in there. That's funny. <laughs> it did not look fun. <laughs> did you get some walleye? Yeah. Yeah. Catch a lemon? Yep. Did you get checked? No. No, they weren't they weren't patrolling the, no, the I, docks. We heard overheard a boat say that somebody got checked the day before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, so they are out there. Heck yeah, they are. I love watching the wardens. I've I'm, i went through all the seasons real fast. <laughs> <laughs> No, now they play them like crazy. They got the Louisiana law. They got the Lone Star law. They got what's the uh, um, not backwoods for Maine and New Hampshire. Oh, really? They got another one for them. It's addicting. Cause oh, it is. What yeah. People screw up what <laughs> you kind of you learn from it a little bit. That's why I was so addicted just to watching the Michigan ones because I think the wardens they switch between 
Montana and Michigan. Okay. A, a few every more. They do more Michigan than anything, but um, yeah, it is. It's just, you kind of just learn from other people and mistakes. <laughs> like, oh yeah, shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? That's illegal? I didn't know that. <laughs> well, shoot, they do a lot of them, which is now it's opening when in three days, right? Trout. April yeah, last 30th? Saturday in April. Yeah. And uh, they have a lot of shows on that. Just posting up in the woods around the, the riverbeds, man, mm-hmm. and just watching people, looking for them snagging. They're hard They're hard to see. I mean, they're good at concealing themselves. Oh Well, they're all camoed out and everything, right. just chilling in the they brush. Don't, they don't move. Just watching them. They don't yep, move. yep. Get those guys right there in the red. Yeah, he's definitely just... Running, pulling his line. Yep, he's just, not doing it. He's right. just pulling. I yep. love the ones where they pull, where they go up to people and they go, "Well, I wasn't fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just sitting here." <laughs> Shoot, I remember one show. They were they were uh, patrolling uh, somewhere in Detroit. It was down Detroit area. Mm-hmm. Was it for like, is it white bass? Yeah, where like it's twenty five a day, and. Uh, and they were literally watching this guy just go to his trunk and, and, put, and empty his bucket into a cooler. They literally watched him do it like three times. <laughs> and they confronted him and they're like, so much fish you got in your trunk? I call my limit, 25. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were literally filling a Home Depot five-gallon bucket. Yeah. And you've emptied it three times. <laughs> the dude ended up having like 84 white bass in his cooler and then so then uh, the restitutions is like they gotta weigh them all yeah they charge like 10 bucks a pound or something over the limit or yep. it's like the guy ended up paying like 1300 bucks i'm like <laughs> that's a heck of a fishing day you dumb idiot right yeah <laughs> white bass like you even knew what the limit was oh, i call my limit yeah <laughs> we've been literally watching you take your bucket to your trunk <laughs> uh shoot Oh, there was yeah. like another guy that just they didn't even know. Like, oh, we didn't know there's no limit. And they both had like forty each in their coolers. Three guys at each cooler, mm-hmm. just way over. Well, there was one. I think I forgot what it was. I think it was Texas. And they were fishing, and the guy walks up to him. Let me see your fishing license. And I don't have one. And he goes, I forgot where. I think he was from Kentucky or something. He was there on vacation or whatever. He goes, Well, I got a Kentucky one. I mean. Does, does that count? <laughs> the guy's like, no. I mean, obviously, no. No. <laughs> you got to buy one in each state. You're in a different state, yeah. dude. You got to buy another one. When he was insistent on that, should count. Because, <laughs> I mean, he bought one in a different <laughs> state. It was like, oh, my. No, it is It is just funny to watch what some people do. I mean, we were just talking about this off camera, too, is like setting up decoys. Like on the side of the road. Right. They'll set up a whole buck. And they, the whole operation, I mean, this buck is like, it, you know, the head moves mm-hmm. by remote control. And, I mean, it's like an actual real deer head that they used. And they're trying to get people to to stop and shoot it from the road. Right. And uh, it's just it's just crazy. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I just never would think to, like, oh, shoot, I'm going to stop and shoot it. Yeah, I, just, like, I never it crossed never my mind. It never crosses my yeah. mind. And I'm yeah. like, do, do people really do this? And, I mean, they were talking about how, like, that was all the time. Right. And it's like people legitimately in that one show, like three of them stopped, one stopped and then just left. Like who knows what. Right. And then two other guys got out <laughs> and shot at him. I'm like, what? Just driving around, you know, yeah, just seeing, I love, seeing an animal. I, oh, I was shooting him. Yeah. <laughs> like I love driving around just to, like I am always, I feel like I'm constantly all the time always – just looking for deer. Whether right. I'm just driving on the highway or whether I'm driving back roads, like my eye is always peeled for animals, probably even more than paying attention to the road. Um, but like, <laughs> I don't ever really think like, oh shoot, I, where's my gun? I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna right. Shoot yeah, it. <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whose property this is or or what's going on behind it, but I'm just gonna stop right here and shoot it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then there was one guy way up in the UP. <laughs> He was obviously drinking, but <laughs> the neighbor called on him because they saw him get out of his truck and shoot at something in the woods. And he's like, oh, I was just shooting at squirrels. <laughs> the lady was just like, 
Okay, here's your chance just to to come real with me. We know you weren't shooting at squirrels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw a real nice buck. <laughs> it's like, you idiot. Yeah. And then the guy has a suspended. I'm like, guys, <laughs> geez, Louise. Not surprised, I guess. No. Obviously, just loves getting in trouble, but. Some of those, oh, they are hilarious. It's like, what, what could possibly be going through your mind? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's fun times, though. <laughs> I love it. And then they, uh, it, it does kind of, it got me like, I'm like, I want to become a CEO. That'd be fun. Like, they're like freaking, you know, they're fully commissioned police officers. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's a few episodes where they, they even did like, um, just like a whole freaking road bust on a car just chilling in the middle of nowhere. And the dude ended up having a whole bunch of weed on him and <laughs> all this crap. <laughs> they, you know, arrest them because they can. Oh, God. We were watching one. It was, I think, Maine or New Hampshire. But the CEO was, he was, I forgot how it went, but he was passing a car in a parking lot. And it was a boyfriend, girlfriend. And you can see because he's got the dash cams and everything. All he does is smile. He looks at him and smiles, and that was it. And then all of a sudden, this car's in front of him, and like the car starts swerving, and then the passenger door goes wide open and then shuts real quick. Obviously, he pulls him over and makes sure everything's okay. <laughs> and then the lady is like crying hysterically, and the officer's like, "What's what's going on?" And, and he's like, she's like, you looked at me and now he's upset. And what? And he was like, yeah, you looked at my girl and you got a problem. And <laughs> you, you were staring Tell her down. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, well, I think I'm a friendly person. I was just <laughs> smiling at you. <laughs> oh <laughs> I mean, my! God. But it went on for a little while and it was like, geez, oh, pizza <laughs> weirdos. <laughs> But everybody was, I mean, she was like hysterical about, because he, he looked at her. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Too funny. That's crazy. Too funny. No, it's just, it's, I don't know, they're interesting shows. They are. But there's a ton of, a lot of, like, the 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 river fishing. I mean, it's a big deal. Like, people come from all over the place. Oh, yeah. To, to start hunting or fishing all the rivers. Mm -hmm. And you got it like the certain hooks and stuff that, I mean, they can spot from freaking just looking through binoculars. And, oh, yeah. You know, the lures that are made out of lead, they can't do that. And, like, mm -hmm. I mean, shoot. And, like, people, <laughs> back to your comment, like, I don't fish license. Yeah. Like, you're freaking fishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, you know, not knowing, like, oh, I didn't know you can't snag them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they're the one, you know, going down the river. What am I supposed to do? I was reeling it in. It's like, you were not reeling yeah, it in. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you were <laughs> just pulling it across right. the water. I was just reeling in. It's not a big deal. Yeah. it's not. My, was it my fault the freaking yeah. fish just swam into my hook? Yeah. I can't keep it? Right. <laughs> That's crazy, oh. though. Those things are big. Big. The salmon? Yeah. It's good stuff. That's this weekend. I keep seeing cars. Trout, trout opener. Yeah. yeah, it keeps posting it. It's probably about to get really busy. I would assume so. Let's go. Yeah. Take a ride. <laughs> I could take I a wish. day off. Let's go do some fishing with cars. I wish. No, we just. I'm, I'm in the process of house building. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you are. Essentially. You having fun? Oh, loads. Loads? <laughs> <laughs> Almost done? No. No? No. No. Because it's uh, all the projects that get added it's, on. It's one thing you think you're you think you're think doing good, and then it's a, oh, shoot, I probably should do this. Yeah. I should do that. And then while we're at it, since it's already under construction, let's do that. Yeah. And then just replace, shoot, let's just do the whole house while we're at <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but we don't. I don't think we have that much. Hopefully by June, maybe be able to get in. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole nother solid month. Maybe we'll yeah. see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's nice. You the the setup you got is really convenient. I mean, yeah. it's very very close to be able to, uh, 
you know, to do what you got to do and not have some far drive to do it either. Right. Which is nice. Yeah. It's a good setup to have. It's a good setup to have. So, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I've been getting into <coughs> just hates me, but I want to I want to get some property. There you go. There's 115 acres for sale right by my cousin's place. I mean, literally right down. I mean, like 10 minutes away. Mm-hmm. 3,000 an acre. So he's a little, and hence why it's already been on the market for like 30 days at this <laughs> point, even though the agent tells me there's lots of activity. Lots. I said, any offers? No. <laughs> so, so nothing. <laughs> Oh, I'm convinced. Up there, I mean, when we sold our house, we didn't have a ton of ton of um, offers, and uh, we had showings all the time. Just no offers. And everybody said the house looks nice. I swear, it's just all your neighbors just want to look. Just want to go look at your stuff. <laughs> I swear. I mean, they were. They, I mean, everyone said, "Oh yeah, it's price fine." I mean, it's not even like it was priced too high. I mean, it's just like, oh, yeah, it showed real nice. The place a freaking offer. It was, it was like there was countless people going through it, and I was like, everybody just wants to come and look at your stuff yeah. for sure. Uh, well, that's, <laughs> you know, that's the uh, open house for sure. You know, that's I got was with Dearborn people last night, and we're like going over the open house. They're like, so, just so our neighbors can see the house, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, you got to let the neighbors in. Right. You know? They help sell it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, they do. They say like forty percent of all your home buyers come within a two mile radius, right in your backyard. Most people, I would say, like like the location they live. So, no, but I've been listening to a lot of these meat eater podcasts about buying land, mm-hmm. and they've actually been really helpful because it, you know, and the foundations podcast through Wired to Hunt, not yep. Meat Eater, but Wired to Hunt, uh, that Mark Kenyon does with Tony Peterson, and it was funny because the one of the stories he talked about of like one of the most important things that gets overlooked is trying to vet your neighbors as much as possible when before you're buying some land. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the stories he shared about his buddy who bought property, he bought like this 20-acre parcel, and there was ten, a 10 acres to the north that was for sale. And this younger guy was... I mean, big into hunting, mm-hmm. right? Which you kind of think like, oh, this is this is good. Right. Like, he likes hunting and, and all that stuff, too. Like, we can, you know, work together. And he's like, you know, just waved the flags high that he was a hunter. You knew he was. And, mm-hmm. and so, but I guess this guy had a whole list of priors with the DNR. Ah. And so this guy was on <laughs> DNR's radar all the time for, like, illegally baiting, hunting over baiting piles, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, so Tony's buddy ended up actually working with the DNR to allow them to have access from his property to watch this guy. Yep. And because uh, he was big into poaching, too, uh, is what the DNR explained uh-huh. to his buddy. And that's why they wanted to right. try to catch him doing and so what ended up happening is they end up getting him on like multiple charges because of the access that his buddy gave the DNR to, mm-hmm. to watch him. Well, then COVID hit, and so all the courts got backlogged, right? Well, one of the state represent or some of the someone from the state, when uh, you know, in some of the paperwork, forgot to remove Tony's buddy's name off of one of the documents as a <gasps> as a you know working mm-hmm. with the DNR. And then you, two years later, when the court the case finally came came up, he got acquitted from like all of the charges except one that didn't even deal with hunting. And then so now he's like the the you know he oh, he yeah. knows that he worked with them to get all these charges right. on him. So now he's like just gun ho after screwing. He put like a gun range like right down the borderline of their property. Oh, I'm sure. So he's oh, just yeah. completely screwing with them. And so he's just like, you know, end up, I guess, down the road. Someone, someone, he sold it to him and just left. Well, yeah. Have, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like stories like that or, I mean, he mentioned even one 
uh, in regards to like there was they hired he he bought this one himself mm-hmm. where he went into hiring uh, a real estate lawyer to look into the land make sure that like everything was fine it was a really cheap parcel which he's like which was good and he's like and I totally support you should be paying someone to do all this work and there's a little upfront cost like whether it's a realtor or whether it's a lawyer, like do the upfront investigation on the property before you just hand over a check. Right. Which he's like, which the guy was so adamant for us to do. Cause he was selling it for like, it was like a a 10 acre parcel for like 15 grand. Like it was like, why? Why is it so cheap? Well, the real estate lawyer found out that he owed back taxes for like 16,000. So, I mean, he would have been on the hook for that if he would have just bought it. Right. Um, but then what ended up he found a, year, a couple years later, they went to go put a road in off of this highway that had the main access to the parcel. And there was like some easement that the road commission put in years prior to them buying it mm-hmm. that they couldn't, they couldn't ever park more further than the ditch. Like they would oh, never, geez. they never could it would be allowed to put in a road or an access driveway. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, Screwed on that one. And, right. And luckily enough, land values went up and someone didn't care. And he's like, we ended up making some money, but we couldn't do what we wanted to do with it. Like, we just wanted to build a driveway just to have some decent parking on it. Right. We couldn't do it. So, I don't know, it's just stuff like that. So, it's got me, like, all... Because I've been talking with Matt and mm-hmm. Matt's brother, Doug. Um, and Doug keeps like, so when are we going to go walk that 115 acres? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm trying to do a little recons right now on all the neighbors first. Right, yeah. <laughs> Learned that real quick by listening to this to the podcast. I mean, it's a good point. I mean, Doug you got someone room. that shoots. I mean, if you want to do, let them grow. But you got somebody next to you that shoots everything that moves, which is fine as long as you're doing it legal. But I mean, it's going to affect it, your hunting. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't benefit you at all. And that was the one good point that Doug brought up to me too. He's like, just, and it, it looks fine. He's like, just make, look at how many parcels are even around you. Like, is there a whole bunch of small ones? Cause then, then that's a lot of pressure. Right. Or is it bigger ones to where it's maybe less pressure around your property? Mm-hmm. Um, but then that's always the risk you take, right? I mean, right. you can't. Can't have everything. Yeah. Well, you can't have everything and you can't really, like how much could you really dig into your your neighbors. Right. You know, sure. Go knock on their door and just kind of lay some rules of like, Hey, this is, you know, I like Tony, Tony Peterson even said it. He's like, when he goes to buy property, he's like, I like to go meet my neighbors face to face. And, and just before I even buy it, I kind of was like, yeah, I'm just kind of late. Like I'm very interested. And if I buy it, this is kind of what I, you know, buying it for my family and for my daughters. Right. You know, lay it out that this is a family farm. This isn't just, you know, you know, and I'm, I don't, uh, I'll, you know, I'm not a fan of trespassing. Mm-hmm. If you hunt and you kill something and it goes to my property, I don't care. Just let me know before you do it. Right. And that we, he's like, then I put up a, a lot of cell cams. He's like, even if I don't, I want them to think that I do. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and he's like, and I just lay it down and I want to, I want to see their reaction. Mm-hmm. I want to see if they even, you know, have any issues with that me right, saying yeah. that. Because I just want to kind of know who I'm dealing, who I'm buying well, yeah, property next yeah. to. It's not like you're living there. I mean, and you're around there all the time. Right. Yeah. It's fun, though. I don't know. It's just, I think it'd be fun to have a place to go. Mm-hmm. Plus, even just like the longevity of it, like more so with the kids. But even just, I don't know, just kind of like a family uh Hopefully something could just stick in the family for a long time. Right. You know? Plus it just beats, give something to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I just, I don't know. Seeing all the stuff that like Matt and Doug and have and like obviously getting way more into hunting than I've ever had before. And it's like, I just want my own piece mm-hmm. of something to do. Right. You know? And just see, I don't know. I watched back 40 again too. <laughs> it's got me all fired up. <laughs> Jez is like, you're ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but that's and then that's where I got all the the reason why I've been looking at all these can ams. Like, well, I need yeah. to get one of these. Well, yeah. Build a barn. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then on top of the barn that you're building, 
at your house? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. We got to sell a lot of houses. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking to buy or sell, right. give me a call. <laughs> you know where I'm spending the money. <laughs> For Barnes, back into the economy. That's right. <laughs> Keeping that money rolling. It's a way to do it. Yes, sir. Yeah. So anyways. We'll have to stay tuned to see where you are. In your I know. I just got to go check it out. Doug even just texted me a couple of days ago. He's like, so we're going to go look at it? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> what? You doing? Between golf and work and uh, kids, I'll find I'll, Yeah, I'll yeah. let you know. <laughs> let me block out a whole day. Yeah. I'll take a. Three hour drive. <laughs> Doesn't sound bad, really. <laughs> Leave the phone at home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving now, meet you there in three hours. Yep. You have no way of getting hold of me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I think it'd just be cool, though. Yeah, no. It's a decent piece of property. It's kind of weird, a little L shape, because he's got a heart. He's got a whole 230 acre, and he's kind of just splitting it in a, in a little weird way, but. I mean, the access points, I sound like I know this crap. I learned all from Doug because he's looked at it a ton too. Right? Yeah, Doug's looking at it every day. Oh, so yeah. He, oh, yeah, he like, can put a stand here. Yeah. Walk in there. Yeah, it's, already, this way. it's got a whole bunch, a ton of, I mean, there's even some logging potential. There's a huge mm-hmm. clump of um, hardwoods in there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So he's like, you can clear out a little area in there, log them a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some swamp to the north as well, which isn't horrible either, but. I mean, there's definitely some potential. Yeah, there's already one little plot area. Okay. Already there in this in the section of the 115. But he's like, yeah, just, I mean, he's like, you got a couple good spots. You could probably add a few more. I mean, that's, yeah, I think it'd just be fun to do. Sounds like Doug's selling. Oh, he's <laughs> selling. He's selling all right. Yeah. No, and I think it'd be cool, too, is why, like, I like that is so close to them. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they've been doing this already for so long, and it's like, and that's the other thing, like, you know, just like, why do you want to have something that far up there, though? Like, could you find something even more down here, like, closer? I'm like, one, it, like, I kind of like being close to someone I already know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 10 minutes away. Just someone to lean on, like, yeah, that's for not help or, right. or to know, how, like, hey, uh, meet me at the property and show me wh- how to do this. Right. You know, instead of not knowing anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, to do that or to lean on. So I think that's a cool part of it. And then on top of that, like for like hunting camps, like we mm-hmm. got two properties. Right. You know? And uh, I don't know. I think it'd just be cool. I'll invite a, a decent amount of people up. And he, he's got his crew that normally comes right. up. I think it'd just be good. Be a good time. Heck yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then tons of, you know, two different properties to hunt on. Many stories to share over oh, the yeah. bonfire. Right. Yeah. I don't know, it'd be sweet. Just going to have to somehow convince the wife that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be praying for you. Please do. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> it's, it's, it's this big so far. Yeah. <laughs> hey, a man can dream, though. Can right? Dream. Absolutely. Go after it. <laughs> well, I think that does it for today. Yes, sir. All right, ma'am. Well, I'm Paul Seguin with EXP Realty. I'm Devin Carl, Cool Star Mortgage. This is the Car and Seguin Show. See you. See you. The primary purpose of this podcast series is to inform, entertain, and educate. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast series do not constitute legal or professional advice, opinions, or endorsements of any kind. Gold Star Mortgage Financial Group. NMLS 3446, Equal Housing Lender.